Welcome back to JB Reviews. Today we're going to do a review on a 2020 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 LTZ 8 foot bed. <sighs> it's a mouthful, but we're going to be towing with this truck today. I'm so excited. I had an opportunity to tow with a 60 gas and it was a 2015 I believe. This is a 2020 with a 6.6 .6 liter gas. It still has the same transmission from what I can see. No 8 speed, no 10 speed unfortunately, but hopefully when they do a mid cycle refresh they might add a new transmission i'm just speculating i don't know that to be true or not but we're going to go ahead and go through some of the features in the truck first i'll show you guys the payload and the towing numbers chevy does something a little different they actually give you the towing numbers for towing capacity gross combined vehicle weight rating all that on the door so you'll see everything today in this video so let's go ahead and get started you guys are used to seeing this sticker on my channel, but GM does something very unique. They give you your trailering information on the door. So it shows you your gross fuel quit rating, which is pretty normal, they, they all do that. This truck with the gas motor has a 10,850 pound GBWR. Gross combined weight rating, you don't normally see this on the door, but it's 24,000. Rear gross axle weight rating is gonna be 66. The curb weight of this truck, which is something that you don't see is 7,488 pounds, max payload is 3,362. If you are towing a conventional trailer, this is a conventional trailer, you're gonna have a 14,500 pound limit. The tongue weight that you can add is 1,450 pounds. Now, if you have a gooseneck or fifth wheel trailer, the max weight you can do is 16,520 pounds. Max tongue weight is 2,460 pounds. So your trailer is probably gonna be in the neighborhood of about 12,000 pounds if you have a fifth wheel. So this is pretty cool that they do that. So like I said, a lot of the manufacturers have not added this information on the door and it's very, very beneficial if you're planning on towing. All right, so these are the numbers I just went over on the Chevy Silverado. If you're wondering, my trailer has a loaded weight of 9,340 pounds and then the hitch weight is about 1,040. I'm 200 pounds and then once you hitch the trailer up to the truck, these are the new numbers for the tow vehicle. I know a lot of people give Chevy and GMC a hard time with their interior, but if you look at a 2019 and compare it to this, there's definitely a huge difference. I mean, I guess that's not true. It's not a huge difference, but it looks more modern and I like the feel. This feels homey and it works well actually i actually like this interior i mean this is a ltz so this is basically the top of the line in my book i mean the high country has a different approach to the interior but it's essentially the same but i like the overall feel in this truck let's go ahead and start it up now this is new for 2020 which is push button start and that's a huge upgrade for me as far as your systems go let's go ahead and put this in reverse you do have a backup camera and you do have a camera for the bed also. They do give you a hitch view out back. I do have the hitch already installed. And if you move over here, you can add lines to the back here. So let me just show it to you. So you have these lines and then you have a single line. Now I did do a review on a 2021 and I recalled that this 2020 did not have a line for the bed and I was actually correct. There is no line for the bed, but in 2021, they added that. So that is a good benefit. And that's pretty much all the camera views that I see here. I don't see that this truck has the 360 cameras. That is an option for the LTZ, but I actually like the cameras you have. Now they do give you additional auxiliary cameras. One you can do on the outside and you can do one on the inside if you'd like, but those are good options to have too. So you can watch your cargo if you tow horses or any kind of cattle. And of course, if you're backing up your trailer, that'll make life a little bit easier for you. Now, this is gonna be a gas truck. So you have tow haul mode. Tow haul mode is gonna be right over here. You flip this to the left. It's like a toggle. And you can see the little icon go away. You do have off-road and normal mode too. This truck has a little bit more features than the 2019. And your trailer brake is listed just below. And we'll be kind of configuring that. Now, Chevy does do something a little different. Let's check this out really quickly. So I gotta put it back in park. Go to home. And if you swipe over to the right, they do have trailering. So when you hook up a trailer, they do give you a checklist and it allows you to kind of set up a trailer that you're using. It looks like they had a guest trailer. <laughs> they had a one a crappy trailer as you can see. They had an RV reflection and a sure track. Whoever owned this truck, they had a lot of trailers, so. 
you can see this truck was put to work so we're going to be putting it to work again today okay so let's go ahead and back the trailer up see how close we can get it under the ball and as i mentioned you do have the backup lines too to help guide you back and then you can zoom in and it looks like hopefully you guys can see it looks like i'm right under the ball right there perfect they do give you a electronic parking brake too so you can push that and it'll go ahead and apply the rear brakes for you so we can go ahead and drop the trailer down to see how much the truck's gonna squat sorry for the background noise but we're at 41 and 5 8 it's a weird number but we'll use that for now unfortunately we have a truck over here so it's a little bit louder than normal but let's go ahead and drop the trailer down so we can get the next measurement. So let's check out how much the truck squat. We are at 39 and 5 eighths. Nice. Not bad. So two inches. Right? Not bad at all. All right, guys. So we're already hooked up here. You do have a class five receiving hitch. They give you really nice mounting points for your chains. And this is going to be a two and a half inch opening. They only give you a seven pin connector. I don't see where they give you a four pin. They do give you your camera connections here. So you saw that on the screen, you have one for the inside and on the outside. Okay, so I have the trailer brake set to four. All right, and I have the SureTrack trailer I'm gonna be using today. And let's see, so you can set up tire pressure trailer maintenance it's pretty cool actually i reset the mileage uh, electric brakes and we should be all set here so this will probably keep track of our fuel economy for us um, we're going to go down and then we're going to hop on the interstate like we always do and we'll see how this bad boy is going to work now i do need to figure out in here all the information i want to see like for the temperatures so I'll be sure to have that stuff ready to go because I want to make sure like the transmission fluid shows the, the temperature. I wish they had like a actual like readout of all the gauges. I like when they have it all together, but I don't see that they have that here. So not a big deal. You know, like I said, we can see the transmission and that's probably the most important one that we want to see anyway. So. Let me go ahead and actually set these mirrors up too. I have not done that yet. So, and it's unfortunately really busy where I'm at right now. Unfortunately, I have cars everywhere. I have a truck that's using PTO so I can barely hear anything I'm doing. So it's a rough day today, but we're gonna get through this thing. All right, so if you wanna put the mirrors like in tow mode, you can do those by the click of a button. You can also close the mirrors too, which is really convenient if you're parking off street. We're gonna start with the mirrors in first, and then I'll extend them out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust them. I just want to show it to you really quickly. And we'll go ahead and get on the road. I've said it in the previous video, I absolutely love a long bed truck. Like there is a big difference in how well these trucks translate on road manners. I mean, even at lower speeds, like I can feel that this truck feels more stable and it's really comfortable. Like this truck, let me see, when we get up to higher speeds, we're gonna test the wobble because when I wobbled the uh, 2015, it was just, it had no feedback. And I've always said that the independent front suspension kind of is a drawback on the GM trucks. We're gonna test that today. So maybe, just maybe it might be better. Transmission's at 144 degrees. And 
I'm just cruising along, man. Like this, I have to keep looking to make sure that trailer's back there still. This truck is killing it right now. Under the hood, you do have a 6.6 .6 liter gas V8, made it to a six speed. This 6.6 .6 is good for 401 horsepower, 464 pound-feet of torque. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, here we go. You ready? Wide open throttle. This truck has really, really good acceleration. So 464 pound-feet of torque makes a big difference. This truck has a lot of guts. Like it's, it's night and day difference from the uh, 6 hole for sure. Like I'm really impressed by that. And like I said, the truck's just floating. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, they fixed the problem, guys. I'm gonna change camera views again so you can see me wobble the steering wheel. But yeah, they fixed the problem. When I did the test on a dually Chevy Silverado, and when I also did a test on the 2015, I noticed that the feedback in the steering wheel was very vague. Like when you did this, it didn't really move the truck, but you can probably see the truck is wobbling when I turn the steering wheel like that. So they fixed that issue that they had. Now, as far as that dually went, it did the same thing. And that was a Duramax too, so there was more weight on those front axles, but this 2020 is not doing it. So maybe it's apparent in some trucks. You probably need to test that out when you're driving the trucks. There may be something they could fix, but this truck's not doing it. I mean, this guy could have done some upgrades to the front suspension. Like, look, I just passed one. I mean, I'm going 70, 75. I'm climbing too, just so you know. I'm at about 4,000 RPMs. I gotta slow down, I'm about to go around a curve. There's a little bit of sway. Like I can feel the trailer swaying right now. But it's not because of anything other than that I'm, you know, I'm going around a curve and I'm going 75 miles an hour. So this engine is holding the gears really good. It's not trying to upshift. I'm going up an incline again. And I'm accelerating right now. Like it's it's pulling my trailer like it's nothing. Like this truck is just doing a really good job. I think that with the Chevy trucks, the steering is light. Like that is very apparent with me towing my trailer. Like I can feel that the steering is a little light. And maybe that's why like, I feel like you probably would benefit by using a weight distribution hitch on this truck. If you're gonna be traveling at 75, 80 miles an hour, I mean, some roads you have to go 70 and sometimes it's just better to go 75 that way you're with the rate of how the traffic's flowing but this truck at 65 miles an hour, not a problem at all. I'm at 192 degrees on the transmission. So when you guys see my test on the Ram trucks, I'm gonna do the same test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch these trucks. I'm gonna make sure that you guys see the difference in how the transmissions you know, heat up. So when we stop again, I'll show you guys the final number here. But as far as fuel economy goes, it won't let you see it when you're driving. So we'll have to do that when we stop. I'm gonna go ahead and make a U-turn back here in a second. I'll show you guys wide open throttle one more time, okay? This is a 20 inch wheel wrapped in a 275, 65, 20. And as far as your weight capacities go, they're right here. Hopefully you guys can see this, but I'll call it out for you. You're gonna have 3,750 pounds. And then if you're running this as a dual wheel, it's 3,415. So these tires have a lot of capacity. Out back, you do have four leafs in the main pack, and this is a Z71, so it does have those Rancho shocks. If you were to get a 3500, you would have overload leaf spring, and this truck does not come with that, even in a tow truck package. All right, here we go. Power, 464 
pound feet of torque for the win. No problem at all, guys. This bad boy is moving. Now, we're not going up any inclines, but we're going 80 miles an hour. That is so good. Wow. Transmission's hot, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we're working it today. Wow, what a great truck. Wow. The 6.6 .6 has the guts that you're looking for. If you need to trade out of the 6.0, I'm sure this engine's gonna be pretty much bulletproof too, so this might be a good option to have if you're in the market. Just fix that six-speed transmission. Give us an eight-speed for the Chevy. Come on, GM, let's do it. As far as the mirrors go, you don't need to extend them. Like, I'm gonna extend them right now. I mean, I don't see that it made a big difference. I mean, if you, can you tell that there's a difference? I mean, for me, maybe I'm just biased, but I feel like these mirrors are pretty adequate if they're not in tow mode. I should have reset the fuel economy on here just because I feel like on this, I turned the truck off and it didn't save it. It looks like it restarted again. Yeah, I'll just do it on the screen here. That way we can have a better accurate number when we stop. As far as the tires go, these Michelins are doing a pretty good job. Um, even with the brakes, like, you know, the steering wheel is not shaking or anything like that. I mean, this truck is still pretty new, so that's kind of rare, but ultimately, I'm really happy with this truck. I mean, I think that Chevy is moving in the right direction. I can't wait to have a chance to tow with the new Duramax. It's not a new Duramax, but it has a 10 speed, so that would be a really good test. I have a friend that has a 2015, so maybe I'll have a chance to tow with his truck, and then in time, you know, enough time will go by, I'm pretty sure. I'll find a use 2020 with that 10 speed so we can get a good comparison with that also. But I'm gonna go down the road a little bit so we can get a good fuel economy number and that'll pretty much effectively end the video. Man, this truck didn't even move at all, it seems like. I'll have to take a look at the footage again, but yeah, it looks really, really good. It's hard to get this thing in the frame with such a big truck. Let me see if I can show you from this angle here. Check that out, that is such a nice setup. I've said it a few times, black trucks look so good in front of my trailer. Cruising at 65 miles an hour, I'm at 2,000 RPMs. I just downshifted, I'm doing about, about 2,750 RPMs right now. But overall, the truck has really good manners on the road. I feel like the trailer's not back there. Like I said, at 65, that's like the sweet spot. Now, if you want to go a little bit faster, I think these trucks could benefit from a weight distribution hitch. Just because I feel like the sway is a little bit more apparent at the higher speeds. It's not bad, it's just, you can tell that it's back there more so. I'm not climbing right now, but it, it still, it hasn't shifted back up again, which is not a bad thing. It's, you know, kind of keeping it from being too busy is a good thing so I do like how well the six speed is responding I feel like they might have done some upgrades to it I'm getting about 7.1 mpg and that's probably about what I'll end off at that's pretty good guys I'm doing a lot of climbing and as you can see you know the transmission keeps on downshifting because of the some of the hills that we're hitting here so I'm happy with 7.1 I drove about seven miles so all in all, pretty good fuel economy for a gas motor. I think if they were to switch up to an 8-speed or even a 10-speed, it could run a little bit lower RPMs and help get this truck closer to that 9, maybe 9 or 10, if you're just like traveling on flat road surfaces. But I think with this transmission in the same scenario, I think you'll probably get about 8 at best, 8.5. So we we'll be interested to see what they do in 2022 when they do some overhauls on the GM trucks. But hey guys, what did you think about that video? All in all, I think that Chevy's truck has gotten a lot better for 2020. They did stiffen the truck for the frame and I could kind of tell that going down the road. I mean, although this was a long bed truck, it's gonna have a little bit more stability because of that. I feel like 
the independent front suspension didn't affect the dynamics on the road like it did in the past. And the 6.6 .6 inside the truck is just so much more powerful. And I think that once you launch it from a start and having that 373 axle, I feel like it still had a lot of power. And I didn't really feel like I was wanting more power really for a gas truck. Now, I really do think that the independent front suspension, you should probably use a weight distribution hitch if you're gonna travel at higher speeds. Sometimes if you're on a highway, you can go 70, 75. And with this truck, I probably would keep it at 60, 65. Last thing I'll say is having a six speed transmission with the newer engine, I thought that was kind of a, a negative for Chevy. They should have probably gave it an eight speed and that probably would have helped overall with fuel economy too. But thank you again for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys soon.